Tyler Burdeen Sovereign, Highland Single Malt, 43% ABV, chill filter, supposedly coloring. Let's see what we can get for 40 bucks. What's up? Hey guys. hey guys, it is Scotch Four Dummies. Four guys on a Scotch journey to help you with your next Scotch purchase. Which might be the Sovereign. The Sovereign. Awesome. From Tullibardine. That's a pretty cool name. And, and we're putting the in front of it. It's Tullibardine Sovereign, but yeah. it sounds cool, right? When you say the uh, Sovereign. It sounds very royal. I agree. Right? It Regal. Does sound royal. Regal is what Regal. we're looking for. So what is this though? I mean well, It's Scotch. <laughs> so it's single malt it's a highland. highland. Essentially, it's, this is Tullibardine's first entry level scotch. This is what they're a part of their core lineup. This is their their entry level, roughly forty dollars. Okay. Here, have a case of Tullibardine. All right. So, All right. so that gets us. That's our entry level into Island. Non age. Non age right. statement. There is some discussion that this may be roughly five years old. Maybe that discussion. I mean, they they this part became part of the core lineup in two thousand thirteen. So it's been out Ooh, there a while. Okay. It's not a, it's not a young a young design, but it is still part of their core. I don't so, see this honest. I don't see this too much in the liquor stores. I see the other ones. In <laughs> that's what stores. I was gonna yes. ask. Where did we get this bottle? Because I don't see it on our shelves. I, I don't think this either. Is a gift from a gift to us. So what did, what do we have? Let me finish pouring this. You go through the core range. I know you've got, you got it memorized. Yep. Yeah. So Tolverdine. <laughs> uh, so I like Tolverdine. One of my favorite whiskeys of all time was their two two five, and that the two two eight. Two two eight. The two two eight, eight. eight is the <laughs> Burgundy cast. But their their lineup goes the Sovereign two two five, which is Sauternes cask. The 500, which is a sherry cask, the 228, which is a burgundy cask, and then they have a 20 and a 25 year old, uh, also in the core lineup. So, we, so this is really what do we got. We got the 20 up there. We have the 20 on the bar here. Yeah. Uh, and and, I and we've a, done the 225 and the 228. We have not done the 500. And that's the one I really want to try. Yeah, that 228, man. I keep that on my bar all the time if I can find it. Well, that was the first one we got into. Though. Yeah, and yeah. it was delicious. Yeah, it was you delicious. Picked it you yep. picked it. Never heard yep. of the story. Yep. This was early on in our journey. So, uh, but this one isn't one that we see very often. So, no, it, which is interesting because this is their their like entry level introduction to Tola Berdeen. So, comment below if you guys see this one all the time. I mean, maybe you do in different states. Obviously, we we've seen some you know different that's diversity fair. there. But I definitely have not seen this in the state of for Indiana, something that's been out for six or seven years. Uh -huh. I'm I'm kind of yeah. shocked. So. When we did the two two eight, we all agree. I think we all liked I think that. We liked it. Yeah. But yeah. the 225, because I remember we were excited yeah. about it, and we all took a step back and said, ah, I just didn't hit the mark, right? Well, He's a I, I was okay with it because I like Southerns. I was okay with it, too. But it's a that, lightly, yeah. I think my expectation was different than yours. Mm -hmm. Probably. Uh, I, I came in high-hoped. So what's the deal with this particular bottle? Because everything else is, you know, different caskings. Yes. Um, so this is ex-bourbon. Ex-bourbon bourbon. That's it. So that's all they Pretty simple. First fill, ex-bourbon is what they tell you. I tried to find where they get their bourbon casks from, no luck. If you go to their website and read around, they're like anybody else. They're not going to tell you exactly where the stuff comes from. So I don't know what the bourbon was in, in the barrels before, but, you know, we know it was bourbon. I'm a little shocked to see that they had color on a first fill bourbon uh, cask. And, and this is, too, I mean. Though. It's like golden. But you know what? I, yeah. I think some people get off the rails with the coloring thing. Sometimes it's not about making the whiskey dark. Sometimes right. it's just about getting a consistent looking, you know, this would be their entry level, so they're producing a lot more of this. To make it all look the same, you might have to put a little bit of coloring in down the line to make sure that the batches come out consistent. So and that's probably what they have. My hope with that statement is that it was a minimal amount of color just for that stamp. There's got to be some color that comes I mean, out of these bourbons, this these, is, these casks, right? This is a light gold oh, straw hey. color, yeah. you know, know I mean, it's... What are you getting on those? It's got pretty good legs on it. And, you know, the first, uh, when I first poured it, I got really nothing on the nose. But then I, I coated the glass and I'm getting much, it was much more like vanilla and um, malt nose on it now. You coat the glass, you let it sit, you let it run mm. down the walls, kind of create those legs as it comes down the wall. And the, the legs are actually surprising for a, for a, um, a young, for, and it's 43% ABV. So it's got a little bit of a potency in there. I'm getting I, like a nutty smell too. Yeah. It's, it's got is. it's got a little bit of of a nut quality. It's got a little bit of floral. I get the honey. Um, I get the it's honey got the malt and the vanilla. Mm -hmm. I it honestly it has all the characteristics that that I would Oak. expect out of a bourbon. Mm -hmm. I mean it really it's classic. It's yeah, a classic malt. bourbon. Maybe finish. a hint of lemon or lemon grass. Uh, it's it's got like a 
a little bit of a sour the flavor, note on the nose. Actually, I was surprised by the flavor. The, the nose is real delicate, real light, and but the flavor really kind of punched me a little bit. It's got like some maltiness and some really it's, wow. I think I think yeah. the maltiness it's, is actually uh, really it's, it's, strong in the nose. It's too. surprising the the palate. It's, it's surprisingly potent compared yeah. to the nose. I get a little bit of the nut that you're talking about, and I, I mean it's yeah. it's I, got a it's got a nice. Um, Spicy quality on the back end, sweetness up front, got that nice malt character to it. What are we looking at price range? Like forty dollars. That's interesting. That's a really that's a very affordable bottle. Wow. Okay, so this it does have a little bit of a maltiness. Not not an old pulty malt meat, but it's got some maltiness to it. And it's a little deeper, like I get the wood too coming out now in the back end. Some of that oak finish. Do you guys get a like pithy sour? Thing going on on the on the back finish. Yeah, it's something mm-hmm. I'm not sure what it is it, yet. I'm not getting that. The, like uh, uh, when the uh, yeah. when the spice faded away, it it got sort of uh, a yeah, kind of like when you eat grapefruit, and after you eat the grapefruit and there's just the sour left, it, uh, it's got that it kind of quality to it. The, the sweetness and the malt and the spice all faded, and that kind of. Like, 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 the, like, the, like sour candy, you just look the powder versus the actual yeah. candy. Yeah, yeah. Like pretty powder dry. Stuff. The, the, A little bit about dry. the location, water source, distillery. What, what do we know? This Burn. is pretty much dead center Highland, right? Comes I mean, from the Danny Burn. <laughs> the Danny Burn. Burn. The Danny Burn. Um, when I was reading, it's, oh, uh, it, in all oh. intents and purposes, it's kind of a young distillery in the fact that it, it wasn't built until 1949. So it doesn't have any right. prehistory like most of the distilleries, you know, burned down. Sold, burnt, mothballed, sold, burnt, you know, right. 1823 sure. stuff. This is eight, 1949 built, went through a couple of, you know, they, trade-offs. It was mothballed, I think, in 95 for... Yeah, for a couple years. Not too long. No, yeah, it's back open in 2003, I want to say. Yeah, it's just it's just northeast of Deanston and, and Glasgow, so it's... They said that it takes 15 years for their water to percolate through to get to the Danny Burn. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. So, I... I, I wonder if that. that picks up a lot of mineral character, or not, it's well, got or to. if it's just like super purified because it takes so long for it to Is it, it's in the to filter. Mountains. Yeah, it's right here. Typically, those are t- tend to be more hard or salt water because it's like granite. It's right. not like limestone. Where it just really takes a long time for it to get through the rock. Yeah. So, oh man! All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna probably need a little bit more in my glass to put some water on. Um, I hate to do it, but I got to do it because that's what we do. You know, this this reminds me of, of um, except for that finish you were talking about, because it's it's funny, it's, it's, it's disguised. It's weird. If you let it sit there for a little bit, then it kind of goes, hey, I'm sour. Hello. Right. <laughs> I'm so sour. Hello. Well, but it reminds me a lot of, um, I've actually been sipping on uh, the, the Balvenie Double Wood lately, and it has a lot of characteristics of that. And I think it's like that bourbon oaky finish I'm getting. I don't know I'm if it's sure. that. I, it's weird because I don't get it on. Yeah, I'm getting like lemon grass. I don't get it on the palate at all until like the finish is basically completely done, and then you know the the spice is faded, everything is gone, and all that I'm left with is just that little. And it's not like overpowering. It's just kind of a. I don't know if it's a feeling more than a taste, but mm-hmm. it's it just kind of hangs out like way in the back of your tongue, and just kind of sits there. And, I'm not getting it. Thankfully, I, I think. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not. It's not that bad now. It's I wouldn't say it's now. like yeah, I'm not getting that either. the end of the world, but it's it's. I don't think I've had that happen before. Mm-hmm. So I've had some water. I've got more honey now than I did before. Yeah, I can definitely I, it, get more honey. It brought a lot more of the maltiness out from me yeah. with the water. A little more sweeter now on the nose than it was before with the water. I'm, I'm getting a straw character that I wasn't that's getting before. That's what I before. was thinking, too. Straw with a little bit of honey, that's where I'm getting with the water. Real you know, dry straw. straw. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. That's a highland the But I got thing. your lemongrass, too. Mm-hmm. Um, lemongrass nose on the finish, or on the nose now with water. Yeah. Mm. Oh, man, I'll take a swing at this. All right, I was going to I, I haven't go, kicked so. it off in a while. So, 43, right? All right, 43%, Tullerbardine, yeah. um, bourbon maturation, don't know how many years, let's just say five or whatever. Uh I'm honestly pleasantly surprised. I, I really came I in with low expectation, guys. I came in thinking, know. all right, you know, this is going to be two at best. Um, I'm really surprised with the nose. I found it really pleasant and neat. I found it just as pleasant with water, and that's at 43%. So I, I thought it was going to get kicked in the yin-yang. Um, it didn't. It held. Um, I thought the palate was really good. It was a little spicy and edgy, um, but that was just probably the first drink because the second one wasn't as much. Now with the water... I got a lot of maltiness in it. It was a little bit sweeter. Um, 
the nose neat. I got a little bit of that nut. I don't know what it was on there, but it's a classic bourbon maturation to me. That's yeah. what this is. Classic yeah. Highland. It really, you throw a dart and you hit Highland. That's this is what I expect to taste. Um, and pleasantly surprised for forty three bucks, knowing it's or for forty three forty dollars, knowing it's only forty three percent ABV, knowing it has a little coloring and it's not our chill filtered, all that good stuff. I I gotta give it a three. I I'm, I actually enjoy this bottle. I think for forty bucks, it's a great bottle to have on your bar. I I can't find anything to really beat it up on. I mean, I'm I'm really pleasantly surprised. <laughs> it sounds. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. I'm a solid three. Solid. All right. Yeah, I'm not gonna go as high as that. So this is definitely not my wheelhouse. It's a, it's a light scotch. It's got you know some grassy notes. Some a uh, little. I'm not sure I get much wood. For uh, for a second there, I thought I got like fresh pine in the pot palate. Kind okay. of resinacy, re- resiny yep. um, thing, but th- this is not my favorite. I mean, it, it's not a bad bottle. I give, I'm going to give it a two, because for forty bucks, it's it's a great mixer of whiskey. I, d- I don't think I would um, serve this to most people that I wanted to show out what Scotch can be. This is re- it's it's a little bit tame. Um, the flavors are, to me are more grassy, more hay or straw, whatever you call it. Um, and less, you know, richness. And so it's not one of my favorite bottles. For 40 bucks, it's a great price. It's definitely, if you're trying to get into scotch and you're coming from bourbon, this may be a good opportunity to get in there and try something without breaking the bank. But it's not it's not a great representation of a full-bodied, rich scotch. And so that's why I'm going to give it a two. It's okay. But, and I would, I would I'd put somebody poured it, I'd drink it. But I wouldn't keep this on my bar, personally. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that was good. I, I liked your review on that one. I liked yeah. yours too. And I'm kind of right in the middle right now. And I think I agree with both of you. Um, you know, I'm kind of I'm like you. I'm in the sherry kick right now. But lately, I've been kind of also kind of back to the normal. Give me some just nice, easy, normal, baseline scotch. Nice right? scotch. And I've been having well, a few those lately. Malt. It's good. And you get something with wood in it, something with a little bit of malt and stuff. Sometimes you get carried away, you can get really lost in the sherry or the islas and stuff. So yep. just go back to the basics. And this gives you that. This is actually a really nice, basic. Maybe even above basic level. And, and yeah. for 40 bucks, you can't go wrong, folks. Yeah, you really I can't. Agree. But does it give you, you know, and I think, Mark, to be honest with you, I think I was right three right, right at first, and I started thinking about it, and you start talking, and I'm like, yeah, he's absolutely right. It doesn't, <laughs> We're give, both you, right. It doesn't give you the complexity. I think for price right, right wise, you can give it a three because, like, wow, it's a really good value, which it is. But what it doesn't do, it doesn't give you a whole lot of depth. It doesn't give you a whole lot of different things to play with. It, we've talked about maybe some hay and some lemon, but it's basic. Above basic uh, level of scotch for me. And it does have a little bit of a funky, sour thing. I had it for like the first couple minutes, but then I didn't really notice it anymore. So I don't know if that, what that is. Man. But um, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to go 2 5. I think, I think that it's, um, I think it's above average for sure. And for the price, I'm giving it that extra half for so 2 5. Sounds like a politician. All right. <laughs> I, I'm not sure about this scotch. I'm not um, sure. It's. It's got some stuff that's really good. Um, I enjoyed the nose, neat. It was great. Yeah. Had had nice multi character, um, some honey, some floral. Uh, the first sip was a lot bolder. Like I was surprised, like Andrew. It, I agree. It was very full bodied um, on that first sip. Um, had a lot of good flavor up front. Um, nice spicy quality uh, as it faded into the finish. That that weird sour pithy thing that was going on i'm not sure what that was about but um that was a mildly off-putting like it wasn't like horrible but it was kind of like what is this about so i don't know you didn't get that so i don't, I don't know, know yeah. if that was just me if it's just today it could be uh, but it, but it was just a little <laughs> weird i can guarantee you i didn't have curry for now <laughs> uh, so that was a little odd uh with the water it brought out some nice I, I, straw, lemongrass, um, so it kind of opened up a little bit on the nose and, and presented some different things, which is really nice in a $40 scotch. Like usually you put water on a $40 scotch and everything just kind of disappears, <laughs> right? What, what happened? Uh, yeah. Especially when it's 43%. Right. Um, so this actually presented a, a little bit differentiating characteristics, which is nice. I like to see that. Um, the flavor with the water on it didn't really do it for me. It seemed a, li- a little yeah. disjointed. Um, you still had some of the spice, you had some of the sweet, but not as much. And it just like kind of hit at weird times and just didn't quite do it for me with the water. But neat, I thought it was good. For 43%, uh, for 43 ABV, what I was thinking was this would be a great step up for somebody who's used to doing like a scotch and soda with like a Cuddy Sark or yeah, something like that, absolutely. right? And so they're used to scotch, but 
you know, they're used to a scotch that's maybe doesn't present quite as big of a flavor profile and they're thinking about switching up. Yep. This would be a great one to kind of step you up without giving you like crazy bold flavors you're not going to enjoy. Um, and you could mix a cocktail with this or you could drink it neat. And I think that you would, yeah. you know, especially if sure. those are the scotches that you're normally used to, I think this would be a nice introduction to single malts. Um, so... All that being said, I think I'm going to give it a 2.5. It was above average. It presented a lot of, of good characteristics for a $40 scotch that I wasn't expecting. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. not and, bad. And, and let me review. Uh, I, I, pour, I re-fortified my glass, and it is really much better neat. It is. So, I totally agree. So definitely, when I enter the water, kind of, whoa. You nice. see that? So, like a jungle cat. I wow. I think I'm going to slow motion right now. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> with a little bit of, with, uh, you know, neat, it's, it's much better. Adding water, it, it, and unfortunately, it takes out that potency of flavor that I really, that I got on that first sip. Well, let me do a not-so-fast in college football and, and counterpoint. You're not going to get rich and bold out of a non-age statement that's only bourbon matured. You, you're, you know, it is what it is. So to, to judge it and say, well, I didn't get these rich, bold flavors. No, I don't think they wanted you to get rich, bold flavors. That Could was be. the point. That it's, it's literally a Highland scotch that's a, a baseline. This is, is scotch from Highland. Mm -hmm. um, if, they, if they wanted that, they would have matured it in something to give it that. So you can't say it didn't have it because it, it never had a chance to have that stuff. Um, Correct. But that, and, but this is not again. My rating is based on my palate, so I like Richard Scotch. Well, no, I'm just saying. I think you you had made a comment about it not having some things that it didn't intend to have. You know, it, it, point. Yep. Um, so and it wasn't meant to be complex. It's matured and ex bourbon. You're not going to get much complexity out of that, right? I mean, if it says right on the bottle, ex bourbon, very cool. Oh, okay, what else am I going to get out of this? You're not going to get any cherry yeah. or sherry or. You but know, to get the higher score, I want more complexity. To yep. You, to your okay. Point on that one, yeah, I agree. It's 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 basically made the way it's made, and I think it's for everything it is the package it is. We all give it a score, but I, I my point is, I think where you're going too is. If I want to give it a three or higher or normally, yeah, it's got to have the complete good. package. So, so there anyway, you go. There you and go. So we two got five because three. It's average, yeah. Two, two five, two five. Yep. Yeah. So two, two five. five. Pretty Simple good scotch. Yeah, yeah. For a non age statement, forty dollar bottle of Teller Dean, I think two five is pretty fair. If you can find us, let us know. Yep. Curious. Love that, man. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, there it is. like, notification bell, podcast. Join us on Discord. We'd love to have a conversation with you on Discord and comment. And we do every week, so. Podcasts, uh, sign up wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you can take us with you wherever you go. There you go. Amen to that. Thanks Cheers. For Thanks for Cheers, watching, guys. guys.